This tutorial looks at heli loops in detail. First, it's important to understand exactly what a heli loop is. A heli loop is when, on landing, the kite circles at a very high angle, almost overhead of the rider. This high angle means the kite's force has a large vertical component and small horizontal component. This slows your landing and softens your landing. Whereas, if the kite loops at a lower angle, then the kite's force has more sideways component and less vertical component. So you drop faster and land with more horizontal speed and you wouldn't call it a heli loop. Your first heli loops are best pulled with the front hand. But once you have enough height, you can also choose to heli loop with the backhand. So it's not the hand used that defines a heli loop, it's the high angle of the kite during the loop which supports your weight on landing. So how do you get the kite to be at that higher angle? If your jump is small and then you loop the kite before landing, the kite will reach a fairly low angle. Once you jump high enough, this starts to change. During a larger jump, the leading edge flies further forwards. During your longer descent, the kite will even overfly, traveling onto your upwind side. Now if you loop the kite just before landing, the kite will stay at a high angle mid-loop. On a larger jump, the kite overflies because of the apparent wind you create. As you start to descend, the apparent wind starts to angle upwards. The faster you fall, the more the wind angles upwards. This shifts the wind window and allows the kite to fly behind you. There are other factors that affect how much a kite will overfly. Smaller kites overfly rapidly and larger kites overfly more slowly. The kite will fly forwards quicker with the bar out, and the kite flies forwards slower with the bar in. For your first heli loops, you won't be jumping that high, so the kite won't overfly much. In that case, it's vital to keep the heli loop as small as possible using the firmest steering of the kite. The kite must circle at a high angle, of course, plus it should be slightly on your downwind side just as you land. That way you get plenty of force from the kite and that force acts at a high angle. With only minimal overfly, a larger loop would circle much lower, giving more force but at a lower angle. So at first it's essential to keep the loop as small as possible. As you jump higher and get more overfly, this does start to change. With more overfly, a tight heli loop will start to circle more towards your upwind side. The kite is still at a high angle mid loop, which is good, but it now has less power and you'll start to sink on landing. At that point, if you're ready, it makes sense to slightly widen the loop so that the kite circles slightly onto your downwind side just as you land. Hopefully you can tell that if you misjudge the kite position, this can go very wrong. For example, if the kite has not overflown and you try a larger loop on landing, the kite will circle much lower. So it's essential that you learn to feel where the kite is. Plus you need to be able to judge whether the kite is at 12 or to the left or right. A heli loop works best if you start to one side of 12 and then loop towards 12. For example, if a kite is on the right hand side of 12, looping left will circle higher. Whereas looping right would circle lower. The only way to develop this kite perception is practice. 
So we'll now look at training steps to develop your heli loop skills with less risk. Although heli loops work best with large jumps, you can start much more conservatively. You can first train with delayed heli loops. This is where, in light wind, you land a small jump just like normal, then you do the loop after landing for practice. Launch a small jump, one or two meters will be plenty. As you take off, you tend to swing past the kite so that the kite is on your backhand side. Then, just before landing, you steer with the front hand so that the kite hits 12 on landing. After landing, you then loop the kite still using the front hand. Use maximum steering for the smallest possible loop. Keep steering until the kite aims upwards. You can stop the loop slightly earlier for a transition in riding direction, or you can stop the loop slightly later to maintain the same riding direction. The delayed heli loop is a good way to practice your loop steering. You must learn to use maximum steering for the smallest loop. To do this, you tilt the bar fully most people do not tilt the bar enough when first attempting this. You also want the bar in for the tightest loop so that you're applying lots of tension to the line you're looping with. However, the exact perfect position will vary slightly. It's possible that having the bar in fully may slow and prolong the loop. If the kite seems to be slowed by excessive steering tension, then letting the bar out slightly will make the loop complete in less time. You can refine your loop steering with lots of surface loops. And then lots of these delayed heli loops. Delayed heli loops are also a good way to get used to the downwind acceleration from a loop. While the loop pulls hard, you must ride downwind towards the kite. If you edge while the loop pulls, you're likely to crash hard. You only engage your edge once the loop's force dissipates. Of course, this must be practiced further from hazards, as you might misjudge how far the loop will carry you. Unfortunately, I can't stop people parking their boats in front of my camera. Start these in light wind for a more forgiving downwind kick. Then gradually build to stronger wind to test your skills. Next, you can start doing these small, stunted loops just before you land. Launch a jump. Something in the 3 to 5 meter range should work. Again, you swing past the kite so the kite tends to sit on your backhand side. Just before landing, you loop with the front hand. Use extreme steering with the front hand for the smallest loop. Start the loop just before landing and aim the board downwind to ride away. As you jump higher, at a certain point, these small heli loops start providing less lift. Typically, this happens with four to seven meter jumps, but that does depend a lot on the kite used. Most likely, there is now more overfly so that small heli loop is not coming around onto your downwind side much. At that point, if you're sure of the kite's position, you can slightly enlarge the loop. Letting the steering hand out a couple of centimeters will be enough for a larger, more powerful loop. If you have enough overfly, this larger loop should stay high, but have more power and lift. These helis are best done with the front hand, since the kite typically ends up on your backhand side after takeoff.
If the kite reaches a lower angle, of course, then you made the loop too large. As you jump higher, kite control becomes more subtle. Around 10 meters in height, you should be repositioning the kite to 12 during hang time. You do this because you have plenty of time to steer the kite and parking the kite at 12 will support you better. Because the kite is repositioned to 12, you can now choose which side you prefer to loop to. The kite can be sent to the backhand side to set up for a front hand heli that circles 12 o'clock. Or the kite can be sent to the front hand side to set up for a backhand heli that circles 12 o'clock. Let's walk through the kite control for a front hand heli. Launch a larger jump. Reposition to 12. As you descend, steer a little with the backhand to prepare for a front hand heli loop. Steer the heli with the front hand so it circles 12. A larger, more powerful loop is now used, but because there is so much overfly, the kite still stays mostly overhead and circles just onto the rider's downwind side on landing. Let's look closer at a front hand powerful heli loop. Now we'll look at backhand heli loops. Launch a larger jump. Reposition to 12. Steer forwards with the front hand to set up for the heli loop. Steer the heli loop with the back hand so that the kite comes around just onto your downwind side as you land. Let's look more closely. Bear in mind backhand helis don't work well with smaller jumps. Because to set up for a backhand heli, you do need to reposition the kite to the front hand side. And moving the kite around reduces overfly, which means the kite will circle much lower on a small jump. The wind conditions and gear you're using affect how soft a heli loop landing can be. If you're underpowered, where you need to work the kite to ride, you won't be able to get much lift with the kite at a high angle. You want to be well powered, where you only need a small kite movement to ride. Then you can get plenty of force from a kite even when it's flown at a high angle. Of course if you're more powered, or even overpowered, then the consequences of a mistake become greater. The type of kite plays a part in how soft a heli loop landing can be. Flat or less C-shaped kites and higher aspect ratio kites provide more force while overhead. Ideally you want medium wind while working on the larger heli loops. Around 30 knots or above your landing speeds will greatly increase plus stronger wind and smaller kites are way less predictable. How powered you are slightly changes where you want the kite to be mid-loop. In strong wind, or if overpowered, you want the kite to be only slightly downwind on landing. Any further downwind and deeper in the window and you'll get too much speed on landing. In light wind, and with big kites, you can circle the kite slightly deeper, so that you have enough power to ride away on landing. I've heard many people say that they can't land their jumps because they can't heli loop. This is a common misconception. Even if the kite has overflown onto your upwind side, you can get it back onto your downwind side using a double movement before landing. With more overfly, you simply steer the double movement more aggressively. 
I would recommend that you master double movements first, as this will greatly improve your kite perception before learning heli loops. It's important to note that takeoff plays a big part in how effective a heli loop is. A firm upwind takeoff will improve your heli loops lift. How to take off properly is covered in separate tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you improve your heli loops.